Want to check in now with Chris Costa, who is with our News Center Maine political analyst, Betsy Sweet and Garrett Mason. Hey there, Chris. Hey, Brian and Amanda. Yeah, we're going to check in on some of the local state races here. And we actually, if you want to call them results, I guess we have them, right? <laughs> in, a, in uncontested races in the Maine House and Senate. Want to start with Maine House? Sure. Go ahead, Betsy. Uh, in the Maine House, we have 27 races that are uncontested. 16 Democrats and 11 Republicans. So it, it roughly, you know, about a fifth of the House is already decided because there aren't contested races in those, in, in those seats. You know, I think it's important to remember that in Maine, every seat is up every two years in the House and in the Senate. So it's not like our senators have longer terms. So everybody's up for grabs this time, but we know already that about 20 percent. And that keeps the ratio about the same. I think it's about what we're going to see ultimately um, when we get to the end of this night. How do you think there's going to... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Gary. No, no, I bet he's absolutely right. And, like, you know, the, the Maine has a pretty unique process where you know fairly well in the spring, like, mm -hmm. who's running for what, and then there's another deadline in July where people drop out. So, you know, it, it, like Betsy said, we're about a fifth of the house in. Yeah. Some of them are predictable, some of them are not, but um, we're, we're, we're on our way. And then two in the Senate as well, right? Two, in the, two Democrats in the Senate are running unopposed. How do you think this is going to affect the balance of power in, in the, both houses right now? I mean, the Senate one seems to have less of an impact, right? Only two uncontested races there. Yeah, but we had the Democrats had such a large lead in the Senate this time, this past time. So I think they will lose some. You know, I think we'll, I think it'll get a little bit tighter. I don't think they're in any danger at all of losing control of the Senate. Um, and I think I think the House, even though the margin was smaller, I think that the House is also going to retain Democratic control, but I think the margin will be less. Yeah, and if you look historically, the Republicans have always done better in the Senate, um, traditionally, mm -hmm. and you're starting to see that switch. You're starting to see Republicans have a better foothold in the House rather than the Senate. Um, I, I think that's actually going to continue, um, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know what we glean from that, but uh, for the past 20 years, Republicans have done better in the Senate. We had been talking about this with Don Kerrigan earlier in the night. Do we expect that the um, congressional races could be a bellwether for how each county is going to end up voting? Are we, if, if we have a you know a Republican or a Democratic candidate that gets picked in either of the con congressional districts, is that going to be an indicator of oh the the entire district is going to end up voting that way? I don't think so this yeah. year. I mean, I, I don't think either of our congressional races are uh, bellwethers. They're not. There's no. Um, I mean, the, the second CD is going to be close, but I think, I don't think it's going to be a bellwether for anything, you know, because I think people, and in Maine, you know, we have such a citizen le legislature that people will vote, for, I mean, they know their representative, yeah. they, it's their friend, it's their neighbor, it's the guy at the grocery store or the woman at the school or whatever. So I think that there's not as much of a coattail. I think there's a coattail from president to congressional, but from congressional to state house. I don't think it always holds up. Well, and it, what you can say is it might go the other way. Uh, you mm. know, your state house candidate usually will do better than the gubernatorial candidate yeah. a lot of times. Right. So, it, you know, it, not a gubernatorial this year, obviously, yeah. but we, we, you sometimes see that opposite coattail effect. So one thing that you and I were all talking about before we came on for this hit was we were talking about the number of early voting numbers, the, uh, the yeah. number of ballots that were requested and the number returned. This was interesting. 388,000 more than that requested 373,000 returned. That's a return rate of 96.2%. The word you said to me, Betsy, was <laughs> that is unheard of. It, yeah. it is completely unheard of. I mean, I, don't, I, I, I bet that's a record in this country, you yeah. know, to have that many people um, request it, but then that many people return. So, so many people request it and then they, you know, like, well, I forgot, or, you know, whatever gets lost in the mail or sure. whatever. I mean, I think it, it follows Maine's trend of being a very high voter percentage uh, state for turn for voter turnout. We take yeah. our voters voting very seriously in Maine. And you have to think that that number probably went a little higher today. People stopping by the polls yeah. and dropping them off. You know what? That was a good point of context. One thing that I forgot to clarify: those numbers are as of 3 p.m. today. So five hours have passed, right. and people yeah. could be turning in those Still ballots. Them you off. know, maybe they turned them in after work, after when they picked up their kids from school. Right. Maybe waiting until 8 p.m. time, trying to get those in. What's interesting about this process, right, is Maine changed its law in 2021, according to the Secretary of State's office, the election administrators can pre-sort and process, they cannot count mm. the absentee ballots in terms of the results, uh, but they can start doing the pre-sorting and the process seven days before election day. So it's a big time saver, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Ballots get scanned as part of the tally today. today. Yeah. Yeah. So and when we're talking about, you know, uh, let's, let's go with the 373,000 number of those just returned as of 3 p.m., right? 
Well, we're talking probably about a third of the state, yeah. right? If not, yeah. oh, maybe, yeah. maybe, a, maybe a, little, a little more than that. Yeah, yeah. a little yeah, bit yeah, more. Yeah, in terms of adults, yeah. adult, uh, voting adults. Yeah, do, you, do you think that those early voting numbers, when we get them by municipality, will start to give us a really good indication of which way the congressional and federal races of the presidential is going? I think so. Yeah. This year, I mean, I don't know. I, last time, it's different this time. Yeah, it's, it's different the, because the makeup is different. Yeah, and last, I mean, last time Republicans said don't vote early. Whatever right. you do, don't vote early. This right. time, there was an effort, I think, Huge on behalf effort, of your yeah. party to say, yeah, no, go ahead and vote early. So I think we're not going to get like we don't know that all most of those are Democratic voters, and then no, it's going right. to switch or or Republican. So I don't know. I, I mean, it, it'll certainly give us a flavor. I mean, if it if it's rep represents voters in general. I think we'll start to get a flavor. And if it's skewed one way or another big, then we'll know something. Yeah, and it, 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 it's just such a different makeup this time. It's, it, you know, you look back, you can't, you have to throw 2020 out when you're looking yeah, at these things. Down. It's yeah, such a different right. thing. But like, if you look from 2016 to 2024, the Republican turnout is so high. I think what's going to be interesting for us to learn, and I think this is going to be an after the election thing, is did Republicans cannibalize their own election day vote? Is it people who are going to vote anyways and they voted absentee instead? Or is it new Republican voters who cast their vote early, maybe low propensity voters who might not have voted in 2020 or 2016? That's something we'll learn after the fact, yeah. but, but that will be interesting to learn. But I think that's interesting because I think the low propensity voters that Trump was going after, it was really like the last two weeks that they really, I mean, that they really uh, turned up the gas, I think, on that. So I, we would think that those aren't the, you know, front mail-in. I'll be completely honest with you. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> this is a new thing. This is right, a new right thing. Right, right, we know. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I know, right. Exactly. And that's my question for you, lastly, is why this shift, especially on the Republican side, to really encourage the early and mail-in voting? Well, I think, I think for a long time, I think there's been a lot of Republicans like me and others who have wanted to encourage early voting. And, you know, President Trump took it in a different direction. Sure. But, you know, I think the, the president and his team learned that, like, you get that, you, you bank that vote early, you save a lot of money, you don't have to mm -hmm. advertise to that person anymore. Sure. Yeah. So there's a financial savings to it. But I, I, think, I think the Republicans are just embracing the way that it is right now. We might not agree with it, but, um, you know, we are embracing the way that the elections are held right now. It's real, and I think COVID, you know, because so many people voted th that way, they're like, hey, this is easy. I like this way better. And I think that, you know, just like people working at home, working from home, I think yeah. a lot of people are like, well, we're not going back. So yeah. I think it's here to stay. And wouldn't it put a lot of us all at ease if we said, oh, we've got most of the numbers in yeah, <laughs> thanks right, to right, the right. early voting and the mail-in yeah. numbers. Uh, yeah. Garrett Mason, Betsy Sweet, thank you very much. We're going to be back with you guys in about an hour or so. Keep watching us here on your New Center Main Plus app. Brian Amanda will send it back to you at the desk.